Hi, I'm Gowan Turvo. I'm Sharda Vishwanathan. And we're here at HHMI's Janelia Research Campus to describe to you the results of a collaborative project which led to the generation of a viral tool that permits efficient access to populations of neurons through their projection patterns. A core question in neuroscience is to be able to understand what different types of neurons in the brain do. And one way of dissecting the role of these different types of neurons is to access these populations. Here I'm standing in front of a drawing by Ramon Hikahal, where he shows different types of neurons in a cortical column. One type of neurons are in the fifth layer, layer five. And these neurons project to different subcortical targets. As an example, some cells project to the striatum and others to the brainstem. Being able to access these different layer five projective neurons is a core question in neuroscience. And so this collaborative Janelia project aimed to produce a tool that would do just that. In order to engineer a viral vector that has the desired property of infecting the projections of neurons, we turn to the adeno-associated virus, whose proteinaceous capsid I show rotating here. One of the key advantages of the adeno-associated virus is that it's non-toxic. When it infects humans and primate cells, it leads to very little immune response. An additional advantage is that many of the naturally occurring variants, over 100 in total, infect very different types of cells. What this suggests is if that you change the adeno-associated virus capsid, you can change the type of cells it infects. One systematic way by which you could explore variants of the adeno-associated virus is to use a synthetically created library of these adeno-associated viruses and screen it to look for one that can infect the projections of neurons. In order to do this, we turned to Dave Schaefer, a preeminent expert in the field, who has created a library of such variants that in the past has proven a useful reservoir for mutants with different properties for infecting different types of cells. The pool of adeno-associated virus capsid variants that we used for the directed evolution screen consisted of four independent libraries. In the end, one proved particularly important. In this library, there was inserted a peptide sequence, which was randomized. As a consequence of this randomization, as I show you in this movie, a great diversity is created. The directed evolution screen required us to devise a strategy that was explicitly matched with our goal of selecting for a viral variant with a specific property. In our case, because we were interested in a capsid that was efficiently retrogradely transported by projection neurons, we needed to inject directly in the brain, something which was accomplished using apparatus such as this. The strategy that we devised required us to inject in one brain location and then harvest those viral variants that made it up to remote cell bodies that projected to this injection site. In order to do this, we chose several circuits, one of which was the projection from the striatum to the substantia nigra. We could then use the harvested library to produce an enriched library and repeat this process several times. So here we are at the Genelia microscopy core. It was here that we did the next stage of the project, where we selected 15 different variants from the original directed evolution screen and looked at them side by side. From this, we picked one variant, which showed both efficient retrograde access to projection neurons and generally infected a large population of neurons. We called this variant AAV2 Retro. At this stage of the project, a lot of our time was spent acquiring and analyzing histological data from labeled mouse brain section. Let's look at one such section. These are the kind of striking images that you get with AAV2 Retro. What you're seeing here is a layer 5 corticopontine neurons labeled in red expressing the TD tomato transgene. We gain access to these neurons by delivering AAV2 retro carrying the TD tomato transgene into the basal pontine nuclei to which these corticopontine neurons project. The injection site is also labeled by the EGFP transgene which is expressed from the regular AAV2 capsid which is what we started with. The AV2 retro doesn't just work in the corticopontine circuit. We found this to work in majority of circuits in the brain. Here's another example. So we see neurons throughout the brain labeled in different colors, each of which projecting to different striatal compartments. We gain access to these neurons 
by delivering AAV2 retro carrying different transgene, each expressing a different fluorescent protein into the different striatal compartments. We can see intermingled populations of neurons in the cerebral cortex and subcerebral targets like the interlaminar thalamic nuclei and amygdala. One thing worth mentioning is that AAV2 retro can be combined with various Cree lines and can be used to deliver a variety of sensors and effectors, including ones developed here in Genelia, like the calcium indicator GCAM6F. We hope that this new reagent, the result of Genelia's commitment to collaborative projects that generate new tools for the neuroscience community, will prove useful for neurocircuit dissection in basic research and for translational applications. This is a team effort, and here are the people in Genelia and in Berkeley who made this happen.